I like to study how people interact. I like to sit back and observe moments of what I would define as uh, microaggressions, these everyday moments of harm. Critical rhetoric, as I read Makero's work, is fundamentally queer. You never get to a place where you can say, ha ha, we can, we're, we're, we're good. We're, we're free of all this gendered sexist bullshit. Um, never. In my essay, I, I took on the challenge of looking at the uh, uh, f possibilities of and the future of critical rhetoric in the context of forgiveness and sexuality. Humans create discourse. We create discourse. How do we relate to those humans who have now perpetuated this harmful discourse if I'm embodying critical rhetoric? I do my best to call attention to the harms that occur, but what happens when this is a non-stop um, endeavor? Um, which ones do you do and which ones don't you do? And you have your, your, your you know, explicit harm, but your microaggressions, these, these smaller harms, they're tricky. We all mess up. We all say and do things that are problematic. I think there's, a, there's a, an impulse to abandon people who have committed harmful um, acts. And uh, of course, I'm mostly there, except we live with each other. I wouldn't have anybody in my life if, be, if I wanted to move through the world and not be offended or hurt. Um, I'd have a very small, very small world. It's not forgive and forget. That's silly. I don't think we can for, forget ever. It involves a change in attitude, a commitment to the other as a viable um, person who I want to be in relation um, to and with, um, I need to, I need to figure out a way to um, work through these hard feelings for some people or not. I'm a huge advocate, advocate for estrangement of friends and especially family. What happens when families inflict so much harm on queer kids and um, there needs to be more discourse to say, yeah, sorry, get out family, I'm over you. You're done. I never want anything to do with you. And that's healthy and safe.